Hi! Um, welcome to the dress reform transition course, More Than Raymond. Um, the first five episodes, we'll be talking about what modesty is not. Just to clear up um, whatever preconceived notions we may be entering this journey with together, um, or any misconceptions, just to help us be on the same page um, ultimately. And this will be under season one, mindset and motive. Okay, so the first thing that we'll talk about, what modesty is not. Modesty is not a remedy for lust and rape. Personal testimony, um, when I was growing up, I was a young lady, I, um, I suppose the sentiments, the prevailing sentiments that I had gathered um, towards modesty was, you know, be your brother's keeper and prevent others from lusting over you. And um, so I was like, that. okay, I don't really, I don't really want to conduct myself in a sort of open, flagrant manner anyway. It's not really how I roll. Um, <laughs> but I also, because of the environment that I was um, growing up in, I, because modesty was seen as something to prevent um, gaining lustful thoughts and desires toward you, then it would imply that the opposite is true. That if modesty encourages lustful thoughts and desires towards you, like 100% of the time, apparently. So as I saw that, um, I was not getting any sort of romantic attention <laughs> from um, the opposite sex, which is what I wanted, especially those that I had a crush on at the time. I, I wanted some sort of romantic interest. Um, and the reason why I wasn't getting any romantic interest in myself during that time period, as I reflect, I think that it was God protecting me. Um, but I also think that given how just innocent and childlike that my personality was, um, it just probably led people to want to more so be like my friend or can look at me as like a little sister, um, perhaps. Um, and plus, you know, just overall, hot and sexy and things like that were not among the prevailing adjectives that came to people's minds, I'm sure, when they thought of symphony at between ages 12 and 17. So, you know, that. Um, notwithstanding, I am actually pretty grateful that I had no um, relationships between those in those years like that no romantic relationships I'm glad um, I avoided a lot of drama <laughs> but either way it's what I wanted at the time so I looked at immodesty as a solution to my problem and I executed it terribly um, I when I was based on my basic understanding of what modest meant um, when I tried to be immodest in any way, I just, I felt awkward and uncomfortable. And the way that I felt translated to the way that I looked. So I looked awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> so it didn't, it didn't even work. Even then, um, modesty is not a remedy for lust and rape because God didn't design it to be that. That wasn't necessarily a cure given for lust. Now, of course, granted, um, physical manifestations of one's desires can intensify temptation, but it does not force someone to make an action to force themselves upon you or to regard you in ways that they should not. Um, ultimately, one's desires, thoughts and affections is up to the person that is having those desires and thoughts and affections. Now, that is not to say that we should cast all the cares to the wind and 
run around naked and tell guys that they need to have more self-control. <laughs> but I am saying that treating modesty as a remedy for lust and rape is actually hurtful rather than helpful um, because it's not true, you know? Um, that's not necessarily what it's for. But what is, what does the Bible say about um, handling that? If you were struggling with those thoughts and affections, what does the Bible say about that? Well, um, a few things. I don't know if you're familiar with the verse, flee fornication. You know, um, there's another verse, I think it's Romans 13. Verse 14, and of course, it's easier to say than to do, flee fornication. What does that even mean? It's not, fornication is not a physical thing that's running after me that I'm running away from. So <laughs> what does that literally look like? Um, well, I think Romans 13 verse 14 gives a little bit more detail that we can appreciate. Yes, it does. That is the verse. It says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. So, in order for something to exist and to thrive and to flourish, it has to be in its proper environment that helps it to flourish. In order for bacteria to develop. Um, it has to exist in something that is dark, warm, and moist. Um, and by warm, I mean something between 40 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that is the environment that breeds bacteria. Um, what else? You get the picture, you get, you get the point. So there is an environment that nourishes lustful thoughts and affections and desires. And as you learn more about yourself, um, and you look at your family and the things that they struggle with, especially if you have family members that struggle with lust um, in your direct genetic line, you probably may have inherited or not those generational curses. So you can sort of see and tell what helps to set up the environment to nourish the lustful thoughts and affections that you want to or need to fight. King David, um, at the time, he, there was a time when the Israelites were in battle and King David, who is also a warrior, among many other things that we just listed, um, he was supposed to be out there with his men fighting, battling. This is not, well, this is a sword of the spirit, but I don't think he had a sword like this, but <laughs> this is the sword I have. Whoa! Bram! Okay. <laughs> but he was supposed to be in battle and so I don't know what he was doing in the palace but when you're not doing something that is productive to your entire being um, ultimately speaking then it is idleness so idleness leads to a host of sins uh-huh so he was being idle and Satan was like I'll give you something to do look at here and etc and etc Provisions were made for his flesh through idleness. And it's not like David knew that someone was going to be bathing on her rooftop, but Satan knew. And the perfect environment, which was idleness in David's case, and often case, often the case, um, idleness was the environment that provided for the fleshly lusts that David would eventually sacrifice. Yeah, um, know thyself. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Do what God told you to do. Be where God told you to be. All right. Um, other things, diet can also um, either subdue or inflame um, those sorts of lower passions um, that will either empower your ability to rule over your over your body or empower your body to rule over you. Um, that's a future conversation. Yes, this has been a good talk, but I will end all of that with saying modesty is not a remedy for lust and rape. So let's not look at it that way. 
in the next episode, we'll talk about how modesty is not just about long skirts. All right.